Hi, good night everyone. This is U.S. Immigration Attorney Sharif Tharp. I am here live to take your U.S. Immigration related questions. So go ahead and put your questions in the comments so that I can answer your questions. Let me formally introduce myself. I'm U.S. Immigration Attorney Sharif Tharp. I help clients to get their green card and status in the United States. And I come on every night at 9 p.m. to answer your questions. So here I am to do just that, answer your immigration related questions. So start putting your questions in the comments. Don't hesitate. You can ask anything that's immigration related. I have also come with a topic to talk about tonight and it's how do you get a work permit in the United States? I get that question often and so I want to explain the work permit. How does that work? Who qualifies? Hi there, August Stevens. You are welcome and thanks so much for joining in. I really appreciate your compliment and it's comments like these um, and you showing up, of course, to ask your questions that really um, keeps me going. So thank you for that. And you can put your questions in the comments um, and I will go ahead and answer. So work permit, in the meantime, while your questions are coming in, I want to talk about work permit, uh, but don't hesitate to put your questions because you, um, you doesn't matter if you're interrupting me, just put those questions in and I'll stop to ask her, answer your question. So the work permit, first of all, the work permit is different from the employment based visas. So if you're in the United States and you qualify for uh, any, uh, a certain type of immigration benefit or form of relief for such as a, you know, when I say relief, it's if you're in deferred action. Uh, deferred action means that you don't have any status. Maybe you don't have many options in that regard, but they still agree um, to put a hold on any actions against you. When you're placed in, in such a, a, a type of, um, if you're granted such immigration relief, uh, you can obtain a work permit at the same time. Um, so when you're applying in the United States and you are applying for a benefit, such as adjustment of status, where you're applying for your permanent residence while staying in the U.S., you can also apply for the work permit so that you're able to work while you're waiting for the immigration benefit or form of relief. How long does the NVC take to review documents? So right now I'm seeing anywhere from three weeks to a few months, so even three months. So hang tight, uh, make sure that you are in touch with the NVC and keep up to make sure that you um, are, are on top of your documents and there's nothing pending from you. So my mom is really concerned about her TPS application. She keeps asking me how long uh, will it take so uh, unfortunately, uh, because of the backlog, TPS applications um, are taking a couple of months. So you could be looking at about six months uh, for your TPS application to be processed. Um, but just make sure that you keep up on your case. If you ha are concerned about anything in particular that I'm, I am not addressing here or I can't address here, you can definitely call, schedule a consultation, and we can talk about her concerns. However, yes, it could um, it could definitely take a couple of months to review. Can I help my boyfriend get his travel visa by asking for him as my fiance? So Janisa, that is going to be the fiance visa. Now, to apply for the fiance visa, you have to one, be a US citizen. Uh, you have to show that you are, um, you, you have to show that you have seen each other in the most two recent years before the date of the application. And you also have to prove that you do intend to get married, that this is a real engagement. So you wouldn't be able to get your boyfriend up on a fiance visa. You have to show that your, your boyfriend is now your fiance and that you do intend to get married because what the, the purpose of that fiance visa is to first get your fiance to the United States on a temporary visa, 90 day visa, and then you'll have 90 days to get married and then file your adjustment of status application for as, as for the permanent residence for your spouse. Um, any, let's see, Kima, I didn't see the previous, let's see Kima. 
Kima, I don't see the previous part of your question. Um, so can you type your entire question again, please? My friend does it, um, how long? Do, my friend came from Jamaica through the Mexican border illegally. How can we help her? So that's going to depend on what form of relief she qualifies for. This is where the consultation is very important because I'm going to go through, I ask a series of questions. I listen in, de in detail to her story to make sure I, I evaluate fully whether there are options or what those options are. Now, the main thing is if you do enter the country without permission, um, there are still ways to get uh, your permanent residence. So for one, if you're married to a US citizen or, or a legal permanent resident, and they want to go ahead and uh, file for um, her papers, then in a case like that, uh, while she would not qualify to adjust status in the United States, what she could do is she could um, she could apply for the waiver and and then go to the uh, interview and not face the consequences of crossing of the overseer or crossing the border without permission. Um, also, if however if she's in a situation where she's being mistreated by a U.S. citizen or legal permanent resident spouse, if she's under twenty five by a parent, or even if she has a son or daughter who's twenty one and up and they're mistreating her, there is VAWA. And VAWA allows any uh, anyone who is in this situation to even adjust status and get permanent residence, whether they're here without permission, whether they're here legally, or whether they cross the border without permission. Also, what were the circumstances surrounding the um, it crossing the border illegally? What happened afterwards? Was uh, did your friend get into any kind of trouble when that was happening? Did somebody force her to do things against her will along the way or in the United States? This can also qualify her for other forms of relief. Then there's also, why did your friend uh, flee Jamaica? Is there a reason that they left Jamaica and went through the Mexican border? Are they, were they fleeing some sort of uh, persecution or threats or harm in Jamaica? Maybe there is also the ability to apply for asylum just depending on what's going on uh, in her circumstances. So she, definitely what I would say is in her situation where we know she crossed the border without permission, um, I would have to evaluate all her circumstances to determine whether she does have options. So she should schedule a consultation and let's talk in depth about how she can approach her, um, her status. How long does it take for an interview in uh, Suidad Juarez? So it depends. It depends on whether it is at the um, Juarez right now, or um, you know, I have seen three months. I've seen a year. So it really depends. So at what point in the process are you? Are is the National Visa Center or Juarez? Um, organizing the interview? Are they preparing for the interview? Have they started processing? Um, one thing you can do is you can actually check the status. If you are I-130 is already pending, you can check the status. If it's already in Juarez, you can even um, go ahead and check to see their processing time by going to the site. I received an email saying to be prepared for an interview, but they didn't give me a date. So that definitely means that they're preparing. Um, how long that's going to take is really gonna depend on how um, how backlogged are they. So, um, and where and where in the line are you? I uh, thank you last Friday, all documents were uploaded. There was no pending uh, document, so you're welcome. I have a tourist visa. However, I'm interested in working in the USA. How do I start? So Nikki, um, you, once you have a tourist visa, you are not allowed to work in the U.S. So the both of them are are actually are contradicting types of benefits. So if you have a tourist visa, no work. If you have um, an employment based visa, that means that you don't have the tourist visa. You're not. You are expected to work. Uh, come to the U.S do the work, uh, work for a part, maybe a particular employer or work within the terms of that employment-based visa. So there are two different things. 
Um, you cannot independently work, uh, come to the United States on a tourist visa and then just automatically apply for a work a permit or a work visa when you decide that you want to, to work while you're visiting. Unfortunately, that is not allowed. Um, Al-Qaeda, thanks for sharing the live. If my fiance have a travel visa and comes to the US to visit, um, if we get married while he's here on a visit, can his travel visa be adjusted while here or will he have to go back home while um, I file? So keep in mind that when your fiance is coming into the country, they're not supposed to have the intention to stay permanently. Um, if the uh, officer, you know, you could definitely, so here's what can happen. Your fiance would come to the US, um, you would get married here, of course, you file your adjustment of status papers, and then, um, you know, the process, the papers would be processed when you get to the interview, the officer is going to look for things like that though. Did your fiance come into the country with the intention to stay? And the way that they can tell that there was some sort of intention to stay, even though they came in with a visitor's visa, is if your fiance came, say they came Saturday, you got married Monday, you filed the papers Tuesday, then that definitely would indicate to the officer that there was the intention to come to the U.S. to stay permanently. That can be considered mis misrepresentation or fraud. And so you have to be very careful about that. Usually where the process of adjusting status is successful is where you say your fiance comes to visit, truly comes to visit, and um, they truly plan to stay temporarily and then something happens that makes them, after a couple of months, something happens that makes them change their minds and want to stay and then you get married and adjust status. Um, in a case like that, you, couples have successfully adjusted status and it has not. It has been a non-issue. Now, when it say ch change of circumstances, it could be, you know, a couple of months pass and the both of you decide, you know what, you want to be together forever, let's just get married and let's stay together and, and file from here. It could be that, but you can't, at the time that you're entering the country, your fiance cannot have the intention to stay in the United States. And so while it is definitely permissible to adjust status as the spouse of a US citizen, um, even if out of status, it's not permissible to, while you're traveling into the country, have the specific intent to overstay at the time that you're traveling which fields offices are the worst or strictest in your experience. So um, they defer, they, it really defers, and it even comes down to, um, and I wouldn't, I, I don't know if I would, um, would say there's a worst or there's a strictest. Um, however, you know, it really comes down to the case type and what's going on in that particular situation. So I've had, and that's where it's important to get legal advice, be prepared for your interviews, because um, if you do have a particular situation, then it can turn ugly, um, whether, you know, it, and it really doesn't matter which service center it is. So you just have to watch your back and be prepared for anything, um, just depending on your circumstances. Um, but I, based on my experience, I mean, I've dealt with different officers, different offices, and um, I would say it's really based on the situation, the particular situation, um, and uh, and how prepared my clients are uh, going in, um, because that is where you're going to find you get those problems. I'm on vacation in the USA and I will give birth soon. Will my baby be a US citizen? Yes, so once a child is born in the United States, they are, um, they are a US citizen by birthright. So it, yes, is it the NVC? It's said in the email. Okay, so it's, it is the NVC. So um, with the NVC, uh, what I find is it really depends on on where, so it sounds like it's gonna be in Juarez, so where it's going to be scheduled, how backlogged they are, and right now I'm seeing anywhere from three months to even a year. So what you need to do is make sure that you are, um, that you 
have provided all the information the National Visa Center wants. They did send you the email saying that they are um, be prepared for the interview and so just be on standby and hang tight. Um, can I file work permit while waiting on my interview? So yes, um, if you do qualify for the work permit, so that's the question. It is a possibility if you um, if you qualify for that work permit. If you are waiting on the interview and you're going through adjustment of status, um, then you could very well qualify, but it's going to depend on what your circumstances are. If my husband is a green card holder, can he file for me and my daughter and how long will it take? Um, so yes, absolutely. Your green card holder spouse can apply for you and your daughter. Um, but keep in mind that if your green card holder spouse turns into a U.S. citizen, um, you would definitely qualify as a spouse of a U.S. citizen, but your daughter, they would have to file a separate petition for your daughter. Then your daughter, it, how long it's going to take for your daughter is going to depend on her, um, what, where, she, how old is she? Does she, is she the immediate relative of a U.S. citizen to also have a short processing time? And so that is where the consultation is very important to determine uh, what, how you should approach your situation, what your game plan should be um, going forward. Because a green card holder can sponsor their spouse and their spouse can include their child under 21 and unmarried in the application. That's taking about 18 to 24 months. So is being the spouse of a U.S. citizen. However, if your green card holder spouse does turn into a U.S. citizen, in order for your daughter to qualify as a stepchild for your um, U.S. for your green card holder turned U.S. citizen spouse to sponsor your daughter, you would have had to get married before your daughter turned 18. And then, in order for the processing time to go fast faster as it would for you, your daughter would have to be um, would have to be under 21 and unmarried. Um, if she's 21 or over, it's going to, and your spouse is applying for her, it's going to be a six to seven year process. Now, um, uh, if you as a green, if you became a green card holder, filed for your 20, your daughter who's 21 or over, it would be a five to six year process. So it really depends on your age. I mean, on your daughter's age, um, what, what are your green card holder spouse's plans for the future to get US citizenship to determine how everything is going to go. If you are concerned, definitely schedule a consultation with me. Now, in order to schedule a consultation, you can always go to the link in my bio. It will take you to the website where you'll see the number, you'll see the contact form you can complete. You can do an online chat with a scheduling coordinator. Any one of those three, uh, three forms of communication on the website will um, get you a consultation with me and the scheduling coordinator will speak with you about how to uh, schedule and confirm it. So let's see, um, are there student loans for international students and what are the banks? So it really depends on the bank and that would be something you would have to research. Maybe even in your country, they would they offer grants or scholarships for students who are seeking admission to universities abroad and so you're definitely going to have to research that um hi there rosemary it's nice to see you thanks for saying hi so she's nine so ashi uh boo edwards okay so if she's nine then she would definitely qualify um for your spouse to apply for her if your spouse became a u.s citizen um, I called, okay, so Ashibu, you called for an appointment already. That's great. So I'm looking forward to speaking with you. So Heather Jones, I need help with my, and I don't see the rest of it. Can you retype if you are asking a question? So far, these have all been great questions. Keep your questions coming while I'm here because I'm here to answer your U.S. immigration related questions. And I also want to prepare you just ahead of time. I'm still here, still taking questions, but I want to let you know that I also have a pre-scheduled live at 9.30 and so at, on Instagram. 
And so our conversation doesn't have to end here. If I don't get to your questions by the time I'm ready to leave, guess what? We can continue this conversation on Instagram. You can go to the immigration attorney and you would be able to um, schedule your uh, schedule it there. So um, go ahead and put your questions in while I'm here and then you can go over to um, Instagram and ask your questions there as well. And that way our conversation can keep going on. Um, so that's the advantage here. I start here, but I end it on, on Instagram. And so you can have even an, a whole hour of conversation with me and getting questions. So Sky Blue um, for every young B, how long does the O visa take? Um, and is it easy to get? So I wouldn't say it's necessarily easy. The question here, Sky Blue, is do you qualify? The O visa is the extraordinary ability um, green card. And you really have to show that you're at the top of your field. So whatever field you're in, it could be sports, it could be the arts, it could be um, business, it could be education or athletics. So if you are at the top of your field in those areas, then you could possibly get the O visa. Now, in order to show that you're at the top of your field, you have to show supporting evidence. So they give you a list, list of 10 um, pieces of evidence that you should show. That ranges from um, awards that you've won, from publications, from um, maybe even showing your salaries more than the average because you are so respected in your field that you've been on um, you know, a selective board or committee or association because of, of how uh, respected you are. These are just examples of the types of evidence that you can show to show that you have extraordinary ability. Now with the O visa, it could take a matter of, um, so preparation is the most important, and then it's a non-immigrant visa. So that means that you come to the US in order to work on that extraordinary ability based on what you are doing. And so once you have your appointment scheduled, and it really depends on the embassy, how long they take to, to, take to schedule the appointment, but the important thing is first prepare it prepare a good application, then schedule at your embassy uh, where you'll attend the interview and then get, uh, get a decision on it. So if you uh, really would like to pursue this, definitely call, schedule a consultation and we can talk more about that. It, it is a type of um, visa that you could even apply for on your own. How long should I wait before applying for a B1 if I was told I overstayed F1 and needed a B1. So how long should I wait before applying for a B1 if I was told I overstayed F1 and needed B1? Um, so it really depends on, um, so if you're doing, so you are trying to go from, um, to go from the F1 to the B1. Um, and it's going to depend on your circumstances here. So I don't know how long have you overstayed um, on the F1. Um, and that's going to be a more complex issue. And so you want to schedule a consultation. If you have an overstay, how long have you overstayed? Um, and in that case, can you even get a B1 um, after overstaying? Are you already out of status? So very important um, that you schedule a consultation and um, let us, um, so keep your questions coming because I'm here to answer your US immigration related questions. I only have a couple of minutes left, but you can hop on over to Instagram where I will continue this conversation. Okay. So how long should I wait? Okay, so I answered that. So I've applied for OPT in July, now have documents to apply for a green card. So should I wait or apply? So keep in mind that when you are applying for um, any kind of temporary visa, so OPT is definitely related to the F1, and that's a temporary non-immigrant 
you will um you your if you have a green card on file then that could definitely compromise your ability to get approved um for any kind of status under the f1 so uh very in that case while i can't tell you what to do because i don't know your circumstances that is where the consultation is very important it is um important that you um, understand that applying for a green card at the same time that you're applying for extension of your non-immigrant uh, visa can definitely cause a denial of your um, non-immigrant visa so uh, let's see my husband and i just filed for a k-1 visa how long do you think until we hear from our lawyer <clears throat> So you would KS Carper, that's who you'd, you'd have to speak to your attorney uh, because I don't know what your attorney is doing. Um, if your husband and you, the K-1 is a fiance visa. So I'm thinking this may be the K-3. Um, so just check with your lawyer um, because your lawyer is the best person that would be able to advise you. If your green card was denied and they told you that you cannot appeal, what do you do next? The winters, that's where we'll definitely have to schedule a consultation. Denials, it really is dependent on why you were denied, um, whether you can reapply, um, what the other remedy would be, what, what can you do differently in your case is really going to depend on how, what caused the denial in the first place. And the person just had baby and both in the States already. So that's where um, the winters, we'd have to do a consultation because I'd have to know the basis for the denial. And then from there, we could definitely figure out your options on how to go forward. So he's already here, but we just uh, got married. Anything we should do to prepare further? So it sounds like you have a lawyer, uh, KS uh, Carper. Um, so you should definitely defer to your attorney um, if you your your current attorney to help you to prepare because they definitely know your case best however um, you know when you are putting the application together and it's marriage based the most important aspect of this is that um, they want to be convinced that you are um, that you your marriage is bona fide so even while you are together be mindful of that you know, make sure that you continue to, to do things that married couples do, like, you know, if um, file your taxes or, um, you know, um, have a joint bank account that you use regularly. These can also be helpful. Um, and then get to know each other. Make sure you, you are both very in tune with each other, your routines, um, make sure you you know each other's history, your in-laws, make sure you talk about, um, about your past, your history. What do you want in the future? These are the kind of things that when you do get to the interview, the officer will definitely ask. My mother applied for an I-130 for me when I am here in the USA. How long do you think it would be? You're welcome at KS Carper. Now, um, Russell, it's going to depend on what is your mother's status, what's your age, what's your marital status to be able to determine how long. Now, if you're here and you're, if you're here, your mother's a U.S. citizen, you're under 21 and unmarried, then that is going to be um, your the immediate relative of a U.S. citizen and you could qualify for adjustment of status. However, if um, if you are uh let's see so if you but if you are over 21 or over then in a case like that um you it's going to definitely take longer and if you're here in the u.s um your process is going to be different and so russell 19 1998 is very important that you get legal advice in this case because you may not uh, qualified to stay in the U.S. and apply for your green card, especially if you're out of status. So you want to make sure that you protect yourself, that you understand your process. So I am going to head over to Instagram now. So what you can do is we don't have to end this conversation here. It's just I'm going to be going over to the other platform, which is Instagram. 
to uh, continue my uh, Q&A there. So you can hop on with me and um, continue to ask your questions. So Shamizali, my daughter is a US citizen, her child born in Trini, Trini, what is the procedure in getting her child's citizenship? So usually if the child is um, outside of the, the United States, um, she could have already derived citizenship from your US citizen um, daughter. In that case, she has to register her at the consulate and then um, it, all being well, it's approved. She could even apply for the child's sit, uh, passport there as well. Now hop on over to Instagram if you'd like to have this Q&A. And for those of you who can hop on with me, if you know you're gonna need a consultation, head on over to um, the, the link in my bio, go to the website where the number is there and a contact form is there, online chat is there. All of them lead you to the scheduling coordinator who will be able to schedule you for a consultation so you can get personal legal advice. I have seen individuals here that I recommend you definitely get, um, get legal, personal legal advice because all the information that I gave you here is not personal legal advice, but general information. Now, if you want to join me on Instagram, hop on over there, go to the link in my bio. My handle is at the immigration attorney. So same as Instagram. Now, if you can't make it to Instagram, I'm here tomorrow and I'm here every night at 9 p.m. with very few exceptions. So I will just see you tomorrow if I don't see you in a few minutes over on Instagram. Have a good night and thank you so much for joining in, everyone. Bye-bye.